Do you know whether or not you need an operating agreement for your LLC? If you're asking yourself that question, chances are you probably do. Hi, my name is Jim Hart. I'm the founding attorney here at Hawthorne Law, where we help online businesses just like yours get your legal house in order so that you can focus on what you do best, and that is building an amazing business that's gonna truly make a difference in the world. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about operating agreements for your LLC. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about what they are, are they actually required for your business, why you might need one, what important clauses and language should be included in your operating agreement, what to look out for, or when you're looking at these free templates that you can find online and through YouTube that you can download. And finally, how to get a lawyer approved operating agreement without spending lawyer approved money. Do you see what I did there? That was the, yeah, you got what I'm saying. Now, if you're operating an online business, then chances are you want to make sure you keep the peace with your business partners should you have some. You want to make sure that you understand who's going to be responsible for what in your business, and you want to virtually eliminate the possibility of personal liability in the event that you get sued. Am I right? Now, if that is the case, then you need an operating agreement for your LLC. Now, basically, what an operating agreement is, is it's a governing document for your LLC. If you don't have an operating agreement in place, then your state statute, wherever you filed your LLC, is gonna govern how your LLC is going to operate. But chances are, you don't know what's in that statute, and if you did know it was in that statute, I'm guessing you probably wouldn't like the language in there too much anyway. By drafting your own operating agreement, you're basically drafting the rules that you have chosen to follow in terms of how your LLC is going to be governed. So you can put in there phrases and language that is uniquely tailored to your personal situation. A big question I often get is, yeah, Jim, that's great, but am I required to have an operating agreement? And the answer is no, you're not required to have an operating agreement. Currently, there are five states that require an operating agreement. California, New York, Missouri, Maine, Delaware. Wait, is that five? Yeah, I think that's five. Okay, so those five. And even if you're in one of those states or you choose to file your LLC in one of those states, you don't need to actually file the operating agreement with the state where your LLC is located. You just need to have it on your books or on your computer or scanned into whatever program you use. Or you just need to have something that you have signed and agreed to between you and your business partners or between you and you, if it's just you as a solo member LLC. So there are a number of reasons why I strongly encourage my clients to get an operating agreement in place. Number one, it strengthens the corporate veil that would exist to help protect you from personal liability in the event that your business gets sued. If you don't have an operating agreement in place, then that is something that the courts will look to in the event there is a lawsuit or any type of litigation. They may just disregard your LLC entirely and consider you as sole proprietorship, which means that all your personal assets, your house, your bank accounts, your cars, anything else you might own are all subject to garnishment or seizure in the event a judgment is entered against you. Also, an operating agreement is frequently required anytime you're doing any business with your bank or maybe other vendors. It's always helpful to have an operating agreement on hand that you can just go to and say, oh yeah, here's a copy of that, I've got it right here, versus trying to come up with something, scramble at the last minute to get something if your bank asks for it. That's never really a good idea. And of course, in the case of multi-member LLCs, in other words, where you have more than one partner that you're doing business with, an operating agreement is an essential document that you need to have that basically covers any type of disagreements that you might have with the other members of your LLC. In fact, I frequently call it an operating disagreement because that's the only time it really comes into play if you've got partners, is when you have a disagreement with them about how something is going to be managed with your LLC. There's a lot of different provisions that need to be included in your operating agreement. And when I look through a lot of the free operating operating templates that are out there, they're missing a number of these provisions. Or alternatively, they've dumbed them down to such a level that the provisions are virtually meaningless. The first section you need to have in your operating agreement is an organization section. This is gonna talk about the name of your LLC, where it was formed, what your business purpose is, who your registered agent is, all of those type of things. It also might have a clause in there that talks about how long the LLC plans to remain in existence. So if this is a 
short-term project or if it's going to be in existence for perpetuity, that's something you would put in this section of your operating agreement. The second main section you wanna include in your operating agreement is something that talks about the membership of your LLC. So you'll talk about whether your LLC is going to be member managed or manager managed, how you're going to calculate the membership interest in your LLC, voting rights, meetings, compensation of the members, all those type of things would be included in this section of your operating agreement. Again, this is very important, especially if you have a multi-member LLC, because you wanna outline how people are gonna be able to vote, what the compensation's going to be, what the membership interests are gonna be. All those things are really important and must be included in this section of your operating agreement. All right, the third section of your operating agreement is gonna deal with the tax and financial implications of having the LLC. In other words, you're gonna talk about how the LLC is going to be taxed. Is it going to be taxed as a sole proprietorship or a disregarded entity? Or is it gonna be taxed as an S corporation? Or maybe even a C corporation in some rare instances, I guess. What accounting method is going to be used? Where are you gonna do your banking? All these type of things would be included in this section of the operating agreement. The next section of your operating agreement is gonna talk about the capital provisions. And by capital, we mean money. We mean investments. We mean how are the owners gonna contribute money to the LLC for its ongoing operations. So this section will talk about the how and the when of these capital contributions. It will talk about how you're going to allocate the profits and losses of the business. A lot of times what we will do in multi-member LLCs is each member will have what's called a capital account, which will show all their initial contributions and the profit and losses that they're deriving from the business. This way, no single member of the LLC can take more money out of the LLC than they have existing in their capital account. This section might also talk about what would happen to the LLC and the money that's in the LLC in the event that the LLC needs to be liquidated liquidated for whatever reason. The next section is gonna talk about membership withdrawal. So what happens if a member decides that they no longer wanna be part of the business? Or maybe they, God forbid, would pass away, or let's say they become disabled and can't participate meaningfully in the LLC. Or let's say they just wanna sell their share to somebody else, either another member or an outsider. This section is gonna deal with all those issues. It's gonna talk about when somebody can, what happens if somebody is no longer a member. It's gonna talk about restrictions on transfer, if any. So you might not want somebody selling their membership interest to just anybody. Maybe you wanna write a first refusal or there's other things that you might want in there. This section is gonna talk about all that. The next section is gonna talk about what happens in the event the LLC needs to dissolve. So let's say all the members decide to go their separate ways. Let's say the business idea is not great, so they need to dissolve. You know, a lot of things can happen. Business doesn't always last forever. And this section is gonna talk about what happens in the event that the LLC needs to dissolve itself. And then and finally, the last section of the operating agreement is gonna just deal with a lot of other random legalities that, that go with running an LLC. It might talk about who the officers are gonna be, how you're gonna keep the records of the LLC, who the accountant is gonna be for the LLC. ADR provisions, ADR stands for alternative dispute resolution. Do you wanna include a mediation or arbitration provision in your operating agreement in the event there's a disagreement between you and one of the other members? What law is going to govern the operating agreement? You may be formed in you know whatever state you're living in but let's say the operating agreement is going to be governed by another state for whatever reason that can happen in certain rare situations now it's important that you understand that an operating agreement is a living breathing document that means that an operating agreement is meant to change over time. It's not always going to stay the same. As your business grows and changes and the ownership structure in your business grows and changes, your operating agreement is expected to change as well. You may start off as just a single member LLC taxed as a disregarded entity. And over time, you may add partners, you may change your tax status to an S corporation, you may change your tax status again to a C corporation, and you may add even more members. And when all this happens, you're going to need to make edits and adjustments to your operating agreement. One mistake I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is they, they think that these operating agreements are set it and forget it, which means that basically they draft one, they put it on their shelf, and then they forget about it at all. That's not going to work. I recommend that you review your document frequently to make sure that 
it's still up to date and current with the needs of your business. Okay, now I'll be honest, there's a lot of online providers that provide free operating agreement templates. You, I mean, you can Google this stuff and find them. The problem with a lot of these free templates is they really are very simplified and sometimes they don't contain all the provisions that you need for your operating agreement. I've included a link down below to the operating agreement that I use as a starting point with my clients. It's a template, it is a Word document, it is protected, which means that you can edit the fields, but you can always go in and unprotect the document and change it to work for your situation. But I've included a link down below. I do charge a fee for this template, but frankly, compared to all the other operating agreement templates that are out there, you're gonna find that the agreement is well worth the small fee that you're paying to obtain it. Hopefully you found that helpful. I'm gonna be doing more videos about operating agreements and LLCs in the coming weeks. Here's another video right here that you might find interesting. If you're looking to start an online business, check it out. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, folks.